Conservative MP elected in all of Ontario. Elsie Wayne, right? Elsie Wayne. No, that was, well. Elsie was with him, but Elsie. Uh, uh, she, she. There was two MPs. That was Sheree and Elsie Wayne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good to see you, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Nice Thank you. I just want to pick you up here in Markham as well. Yes, okay. <laughs> good to see you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go around the whole table. Yeah. We were just together. So yes. <laughs> I just want to say hello to everybody. Hi, Karen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Very. Okay. No, that's Julie. Nice to see you, Lydia. Thank you. Hi, Emily. Emily, good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Nice to meet you, Angela. Angela, how are you? Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you for being here today. Good to see you. Thank you, Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Harry. Another Harry. Excellent. James. Green. James Ling. Okay. Good to meet you, James. Hi there. Tom. Good to see you. CC News? Yeah. Okay. Good to see you. Hill? Yeah. Hill? Okay, nice good to meet you, Hill. Jennifer. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. We're just running from one thing to uh, to another. So. Uh, just anywhere. All right, everyone, feel free to sit down. We'll make this informal. Excellent, I need some tea. Wake me up a little bit. I'm running a caffeine deficit. Need to fix that. So, be with all of you to celebrate the new year, to join with. Uh, Anna Roberts, a member of Parliament for Vaughan King, and uh, Jazraj Halam, the uh, member of Parliament from Calgary Forest Lawn, who is also a Shadow Minister of Finance. Uh, we also have Phil Lawrence, who is our Shadow Minister responsible for, for tax reform, uh, who is also here as well. And then we, uh, we have some other good friends uh, with us, um, like uh, Arpan Nakana, uh, hopefully uh, we'll join us in Parliament uh, at some point in the, <laughs> in the future. Um, and of course all of you, thank you for being with us today. Um, it's uh, New Year, which is a time for us to reflect on uh, renewal. And we need renewal in this country right now. Uh, everything feels broken these days. You know, inflation is at a 30, sorry, a 40 year high. Uh, we have 1.5 million people that are eating at food banks in a single month in this country. One uh, CEO of a food bank in Mississauga recently said that people are coming to her to ask for help with medical assistance in dying, not because they're sick, but because they can't afford to live anymore. 35-year-olds live in their parents' basements because home prices doubled and now interest rates are going up making mortgage payments unattainable for the average family. Uh, we see young people, their students, who are actually living in homeless shelters uh, as a result of the cost of living crisis. Why is this happening? Well, the cost of government is driving up the cost of living. A half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits bids up the goods we buy and the interest we pay. Uh, inflationary taxes like the carbon tax has pushed up gas, heat, and grocery bills, making life more and more expensive. And now Trudeau and Singh want to triple, triple, and triple the carbon tax, making life even more expensive for all Canadians. Enough. We can't afford to pay anymore. And that is why a Conservative government would cap government spending and cut government waste to eliminate the inflationary deficits. We'll get rid of the carbon tax and the red tape so that our businesses, farmers, and workers can produce more homes, food, and fuel. We'll make it possible for your paycheck to buy you a good life again. We're gonna incentivize the municipal gatekeepers to get out of the way and speed up permitting so we can build more houses right across this country 
so that our newcomers, our working class and our youth can afford to buy a home. But it's not just economics. We see um, the suffering of everyday people. Crime uh, is out of control. 32% increase in violent crime since Justin Trudeau became Prime Minister. His policies of easy bail are allowing violent re-offenders to go back on the streets right after offending and to, to commit new crimes. Recently, a, a courageous OPP officer lost his life to a murderer uh, who had already been in, um, alleged murderer, who had already been uh, arrested recently, but was let go on bail uh, and therefore was able to re-offend. Uh, we need to re remove Justin Trudeau's catch and release bail reform so that we can keep violent offenders behind bars instead of having them re-offend. We see our streets flooded with opioids and heroin and other uh, drugs that are killing our people. Tent cities form across the country. And the Liberal government's policy is to flood the streets with even more easy and cheap de uh, drugs that are, are resulting in massive increases in overdoses and increased crime. What we need to do is provide people with treatment and recovery so that they can get off the streets and into a productive life. Uh, that is the agenda of the Conservative Party. We believe that we need to turn this hurt into hope. And that includes giving immigrants opportunity to achieve their full potential. Right now in Canada, hardworking immigrant professionals are banned from working in their field by government gatekeepers that deprive them of licenses to practice. A polyev government would work to sign deals with all the provinces to get it so that every within 60 days of an immigrant applying to work in their field, they should get a yes or no based on their tested abilities, not based on where they come from. That way we can have more doctors, more engineers, more uh, architects, and other uh, high-demand professions that we need. Uh, we have medical graduates across this country that can't work on their own field right now about 40% of immigrant doctors and nurses get a chance to work in their field. The other 60% are banned from doing so, even when they are qualified. We need to streamline, simplify, and get immigrants into the jobs for which they were trained and for which they are in high demand here in Canada. Uh, so that, that is my purpose. You know, I, I was uh, born uh, to a teenage mother, was unable to raise me, so she put me up for adoption to two school teachers. And they always taught me that it didn't matter where I came from, it mattered where I was going, it didn't matter who I knew, but what I could do. And that's the country I want my kids to inherit. I want a country where it doesn't matter, matter if your name is more Martin or Mohammed, Chang or Charles, Steinberg, Smith or Singh. As long as you're prepared to work hard, follow the rules, and pay your taxes. You can get ahead, you can achieve your dreams. That's why 400,000 people come to this country every year. Let's rekindle that dream. Let's turn the hurt into hope. Let's make this the freest country on earth and give you back control of your lives. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming this great event. My question is that, um, can you comment on about the Indo-Pacific strategy introduced the recently? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, um, to, uh, these nuts are very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for being momentarily distracted. But I think the Indo-Pacific strategy of the government right now is vague and ill-defined. Um, first of all, we do need to recognize that Asia is the fastest growing region in the world. It has um, you know, we have combined between India and China, two, over two, tri two uh, billion people. Um, these markets are going to be very important for our economy, but we need to be clear-headed. Canada needs to stand up for its own interest, and that means producing our own strategic minerals here in Canada under Canadian ownership, becoming self-reliant in the essentials of the future economy, and that will mean produce speeding up approvals and permits for mines of lithium, graphite, um, cobalt, nickel, copper. Uh, these are the electric minerals that will be required. We cannot simply import them from other parts of the world. We also need to speed up permitting and lower taxes on the manufacturing of uh, electric car batteries and other essentials because, again, we cannot rely on the rest of the world for it. 
Um, with regards to China, um, listen, I think um, we, need, uh, we, we, we need to express our friendship to the people of China um, and our gratitude for the enormous benefit that Canada has enjoyed as a result of the countless immigrants that have come here from China. Um, at the same time, we need to stand up for our own values and our own interests. Uh, that includes uh, preventing foreign interference in our democracy. Uh, foreign interference is never acceptable from any country. And it's time for the government of Canada to come up with a real plan to counter that interference about which it was warned by intelligence agencies uh, over two years ago. Um, we, uh, we need to um, stand up for our interests and our values on the global stage and not be intimidated. Uh, and uh, we need to do that now. We, we also need to bolster our, our own um, uh, ability to project economic strength into the region by expanding trade with uh, the CPTPP countries um, and looking to other partners like India, for example. I think we should consider um, d deepening our trade with India. Uh, it, is, um, it has been, up until recently, the fastest growing economy in the world. It is. They have generally a free market uh, with a parliamentary democracy and uh, India I think is a good partner with which we have a strong diaspora population that can help get us and our products in the door. So that's an overview, uh, but uh, I'm sure we can, uh, we can address more specifics later on. Thank you.